I hate washes. I know they're super beloved, but I can't help but feel like whenever I use them, they turn my nice base coats into just a muddy mess. I totally get that this is probably user error and my fault though, and there's really no denying how effective they are for batch painting or just speeding up army painting in general. So in this video, I wanna take a look at some things I can mix up on my own to sort of take the place of washes in my painting process. The first thing I wanna do is mix up an amount of wash large enough to just be able to dunk my minis right into it. And then the second thing I wanna mix up is something thicker that I can sort of spot apply to a miniature that I can then wipe away from the surface, similar to an enamel or oil application, but in all acrylic. But before I do any of this weathering and shading, I'm gonna to have to lay down some nice base coats onto my unit of Monstakillas. I'm also gonna put some timestamps in the video, so feel free to skip ahead to the weathering and shading portion if that's more your thing. Started with a black prime and then did an all over base coat of Vallejo charred brown. I like this approach to painting, especially when I'm batch painting a whole unit or doing something quickly. Having a dark cohesive color as a base helps tie all the subsequent colors together. It also gives everything a colorful shadow as well as giving all the bits and bobs and details a base color, allowing me not to worry about them as much later as they sort of just recess into that base color. Also, since this video is all about shading, I suspect my models are gonna get pretty grimy, perfect for some swampy orcs, and will allow me to lean into this charred brown base color and have more heavy pronounced shadows. For the flesh, I jump to a bright, almost highlight color, Strachan green, and pretend my paint pot isn't a total mess. I start with such a light color in hopes that all the shading I'll add will dull it down and incorporate into the charred brown, creating shadows and midtones, and then I can touch it up with more striking green to create any additional highlighting where needed. Instead of going for complete all over opaque coverage, instead on the second and third passes, I'm focusing on the contours of the muscles and following them building richer color on the tops and helping to create volume. This only takes a small amount more effort than a typical base coat, but I think it adds a ton of value, especially for trying to paint a unit up quickly. Following this, gory red is used on all the scale hides. Then on the models missing this scale hide, I pick out their cloth in red instead to create some variety and still include red across the unit. This is painted following the same principle as the flesh, leaving the deepest shadows charred brown and building up layers and color on the high points to build shape. A notable feature on these models is the large fur hide they have. To paint this, I'm gonna add white to our charred brown and roughly a 50-50 mix to get a nice mid-tone. And then I add this to the main area of the fur where a majority of the clumps are leaving the area further away from the orc bodies, more of the charred brown, establishing a quick gradient. And then I go back in with even more white added to the charred brown and pick out some of those individual strands of fur. I'm not being super precious about this at all, kind of just going back and forth with this off-white and mid-tone to mostly just create a rough gradient along the fur. What we're looking for here is just to establish some base colors and variety on the fur as they're gonna bring this all down and grime it up with the shading and then add a dry brush at the end to pick out the detail again. These same colors are also used to pick out other details like the wraps on their legs and the wood pattern on the spears. Not fully rendering these areas, but instead picking out some of the choice bits that would be catching the light and helping them read as the material that they are. For things like the bone and teeth, I added incremental amounts of white to dry a bark and layered them up, adding lighter color to the raised parts of things like the skulls, keeping in mind that these colors look a lot lighter on the model than it does on my white palette. The same color was also used for the skin of the drum I used some stippling and light lines to create texture and then used a dry brush to tie it all together. 
I did realize that this buried that sculpted in texture, so I float in a tiny amount of water down charred brown to bring it back. The beast knob was riddled with detail, so I used an extra color in NATO black to pick out the lion on his shoulder. I used a dark color to kind of help with his visual readability, and because it reminded me of the Pride Lord and being a hunter in World of Warcraft. Next, we're moving on to the metal. For all the spikes and smaller metal bits, I'm going to be using Electric Blue mixed into Iron Warriors. This helps to tint it into a bluey steel color and help contrast against all these warm colors I've already added. I'm going to be giving it a splotchy coverage, allowing some of the charred brown to show through and appear as weathering and rust on the metal. For my next color choices, I'm going to really pump up the visual interest and give this otherwise more simple color scheme something to really hang on to. I'm going to be painting all of those skull helms gold. I'll also mix in some electric blue into Retributor armor as it's a really orange gold. And while this is cool for something more stylized, I think tanning it a bit cooler will look a tad more realistic and also help it tie into my color scheme better. With the first layer, I sort of just sketch where I want the gold to go and then reinforce the raised areas with another pass if needed. For the eggs and horn, I use stippling and small marks to help paint on a texture and for the most part just followed the sculpted on detail. For the weapons and bracers, I wanted a heavily patinaed bronze look, and for this I chose a pastel emerald green gouache, first mixing some charred brown into it, dappling it on, and then doing another pass of pure pastel emerald. This helped to create color variety and built up a visual texture that a worn and weathered piece of bronze might have. And now, it's time for some shading. One of the things I struggle with when using washes is an uneven coverage or placement of the wash. Seems really hard to be purposeful and put it exactly where I want it to be. And then when I do try to tidy it up, there's a lot of staining and it can leave a sort of splotchy, uneven coverage. And I end up repainting a lot of the model, sort of working against the wash rather than with it. So I want to mix up my own wash in a large enough batch where I can just dunk my minis right into it, getting a complete even coverage and not having to worry about missing any spots and hopefully just being super fast too. This is inspired by the time before Games Workshop washes were even a thing and hobbyists used to actually dunk their models into hardwood floor varnish and stain, staining the model but also collecting in the recesses once most of the excess was shaken off, usually with a power drill. This was a huge breakthrough at the time and I remember it being all over the old Warhammer forms, so excited to kind of imitate that. I don't wanna go quite as intense as that though, so I'm gonna mix up something a little more subtle with a lighter coverage that hopefully still gives some nice shading. I start with a container large enough to fit my models and add two droppers full of acrylic sepia ink to act as my base color. Then I add roughly a third of that amount of magenta acrylic gouache. Gouache retains a lot of color intensity when watered down and this is going to help add some color to the shadows instead of just the murky sepia color. And because I wanted the wash I was creating to remain workable and malleable, I added in some paint retarder. I added this in roughly a 1 to 6 part ratio following the instructions on the bottle. This will help slow down the drying time so I can still manipulate it in fixed areas without worry, hopefully fixing a problem I have with typical store-bought washes. And then I added matte medium, which is a mostly translucent acrylic medium you can kind of think of it as a colorless acrylic paint. This was added to help bind the mixture together without adding any unwanted color. I added enough to roughly double what was already in there, so basically a one-to-one -one ratio of matte medium to paint. And from here I added water and a drop or two of dish soap to help break the water surface tension 
and help the mixture flow into the recesses. Once everything was in there, it took quite a bit of stirring off camera to get it thoroughly mixed. It's also important to remember when working with larger amounts of liquid and pouring them, some splashing can occur, so it's super important to wear safety goggles or eye protection. Please be safe. And from here, there is really nothing left to do except to start dunking minis. Upon pulling the first model out of the vat, it was a lot less intense than I was expecting it to be. And I should have stopped and adjusted my mix here, but I wanted all my guys to match, so I just trudged forward, tapping off any excess wash and continuing with the dunking. Unfortunately, not only was it too light of a shade, but there was a decent amount of watermarks and coffee staining, especially on the flat sections of the weapons. I added too much water and wasn't really attentive enough to the pooling. Which like, of course there's too much water in it, I made a huge cup of it, so. So to fix this, I added more ink, magenta gouache, and matte medium, basically doubling what was already in there and stirred thoroughly. I redunked all my minis into my new and improved vat of wash and was liking the results way better this time and made sure to wick away any excess wash with that slow drying time allowing me to kind of comb over my models and make sure I got it all. You can kind of see how the first attempt left a bit of those watermarks while the second one left behind more of just a ruddy color. After sitting with these guys for a bit, I am really liking how this violet muddy wash came out. I think it played well with the established colors and helped to grime them up a bit, adding some colorful shadows. One of the things I didn't like though is that because it's a more subtle application, it didn't really penetrate deep into those heavily textured fur and scale areas staining the recesses. So for these, I wanted to develop something a bit thicker that I could apply to just those areas, smearing it on really into those nooks and crannies, staining them, and then be able to wipe it away, much like an enamel or oil wash, only in acrylic. And speaking of fur, I still have those monkeys I need to paint up, which I think will be a really perfect candidate for this weathering and shading application. Feel free to skip forward to me mixing up that medium though. The monkeys are gonna start with the same all over charred brown base coat, followed by adding some white to it and giving it an all over dry brush. I then add a little more white and hit the fur on the head and other prominent areas. Then I painted the stone they're standing on dry bark and mixed in some white to hit all the raised parts and areas facing upwards as a highlight leaving dry bark in the shadows. For the rocks, I stippled and made small marks to create texture, and then added more white, painting smaller and more extreme areas to work as a final highlight. I was using snow monkeys as reference, so I painted the hands, face, and other skin areas gory red. For a highlight, I added white plus emerald green to help tone down the intensity and saturation of the color, but this ended up just being kind of horrifying when painted on, so on the other model I added a much smaller amount of white to the gory red for the highlight, and then repainted the first monkey accordingly. Since they're already quite warm, I made a cool gray with nato black and white for their teeth, and then painted the trinket around their necks as gold. I knew I wanted my weathering and shading medium to have a long working time so I could apply it to my model and then wipe it away, so I started with two drops of retarder. Then I added about a 3 to 1 ratio of matte medium to add some body and something to hold the mixture together. Then I added three drops of sepia ink for a nice grimy color. I mixed it thoroughly, and you can see it's pretty thick, which was great for me, but I'm sure it could be watered down if that's what you're looking for. I applied this to the monkey's fur all over, but avoided the head for contrast. Once it was on there, I started wiping it away. My finger worked fine, but I had a lot of luck with a Q-tip or cotton swab, adding water to it when I wanted to really get it off there. And this was it. I had so much fun globbing this stuff on and wiping it away, really loving the results. It layered well, removed super easy, but also had some nice staining power, which was 
exactly what I wanted for these heavily textured areas. Q-tips have a lot of fuzz to them, but I found adding a bit of water and rolling it in my palm or fingers helps smooth these down, and the added water really helped with the removal of the medium. This is totally what I have been after, and I am super stoked to have found it. Once I had my fun, it was time to put the finishing touches on all of the colors. I started with the fur and turtle shell, mostly dry brushing a mixture of white and charred brown onto the large areas, picking out the detail, and then also hitting them with a typical brush on smaller areas when needed. The scale hides were dry brushed with that same red color, gory red, for something subtle. And then all of the bone was given a final highlight of white with dried bark mixed in. This lightened the value and also helped to cool down the warm tone from the wash, giving it a nice bone color. All of that patina bronze was kind of a mess, so I added some watered down sepia ink in a three parts water to one part ink and brought back more of a bronze color, as well as hiding some of the mistakes and creating definition. Then I used this weird clipped brush I have to do some heavily stippling of that pastel emerald to build up a lot of texture and patina. I also used a typical brush to hit some edges when needed. I held my breath and hit all the eyes with Warlord Purple, allowing me to tidy up any mistakes when I move on to the flesh. I take my original Strachan Green color and clean up the worst of the wash staining as well as enunciate the muscle forms and highlighting areas like the fingers and face. And then for the final details on the beast knob, I just add a bit of white to the sepia ink, creating a murky green gray and dry brush it onto the hanging bags and gator paw adding more white for highlights or details like the threads. And with that, these swampy boys are done. If you want to see how I did the bases, I'll leave a link to another video in the description. While painting these, I think we made a really awesome discovery with that weathering and shading medium I mixed up with just matte medium and retarder. This goopy mix did exactly what I was looking for and I think I'll definitely incorporate it in the future especially for vehicles or war machines and just speeding up painting in general. I think this is something that's super useful and easy to use, allowing you to get those nice grimy weathering effects akin to enamel or oil washes, but with your typical acrylics and just water instead of spirits. Matte medium is something I find super useful and love to have on hand, and combined with another great medium like Retarder, it's super cool and we can create this new concoction that I think has a ton of applications. My big vat of wash that was mixed up was pretty cool, but I'm not sure I'm sold on wash just yet. I still prefer to paint in my shadows or just use the watered down acrylic, but I think I'll use this as a glaze or through my airbrush in the future, so it's definitely not a waste. I really enjoy the color of it, and I think it complemented the orc skin tone really well and helped to make some nice interesting shadows and speed up the painting process. I think choosing interesting colors plus the new techniques made this a super fun experience and I hope you got something out of the video as well. Thanks for watching.